been a couple for too darn long? Hey. We found a box for that. Stay tuned to find out. Hello and welcome to Couple Chat. Where we, parents, discuss topics for you. Parents, I'm Matt. I'm Jackie. Let's chat. Unlike Matt's reaction at the beginning of this episode, he's actually the reason we have this box. I didn't react like that because I don't like the box. I reacted like that because you said we've been a couple for far too darn long. Yeah, we have been a couple for too darn long. <laughs> 15 years is a long time. I suppose so. As some of you may know. <laughs> <laughs> and some of you hope to be. <laughs> mm. So... Yeah, we, um, you know, I don't know how you came up with this idea, but the box is from the Desi Shop brand, um, D-E-S-S-I-E, and it is this cool little box. It is 52 date nights and 300 conversation starters. Ignite your love, connection, and adventure. Yeah. <laughs> we have no idea if it does that yet because you guys are going to experience the first time we're actually going to try and use this box tonight. Yeah. So we're going to unbox it, kind of choose our date night and the adventure that we're going to do. Um, we may not, we may try some of the conversation starters. I don't know, maybe one or two. Sure. Um, but yeah, we're just giving you a glimpse of some box games that we found that Matt actually purchased that I think of really, you know, helped us in our relationship and our communication. So yeah, I'm we, very excited. Yeah, we haven't tried this one out, but I did buy a few different like couples games and things of that nature um, for our anniversary, which is December 17th or for our dating anniversary, which is December 17th. So I thought this was something perfect for it. And then like I said, we actually played some of the games that I bought, but uh, we're not really going to go into those in this episode, maybe in a uh, future. But yeah. Yeah. So you want to want to try this baby out? Yeah, sure. All right. As long as it doesn't lead to making babies. No, no more. We're done. Thank you. Anyway, so in this box, there's these little card envelope things they're about the size of like smaller than a wallet size picture which yeah. is interesting there are five of these envelopes one is labeled questions about past and future questions about us as individuals mm. questions about family questions about intimacy and then the last one is questions about our lives as a couple oh we can chat about that we can. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have a how to play card, which is about the size of an index card and only has one side filled in. So seemingly easy. Um, and then it looks like a bunch of date night cards. Yeah. So the gist of this a little is pile of date night cards about the same thickness. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say the gist of this is, you know, picking a fun date. Maybe you'll do something that you, you know, would never think of. We get caught in this rut of going on movie date nights. That's pretty much our thing. We go see a movie, we go out to dinner or vice versa, and we come home and that's about it. And uh, we love movies. We do. I mean, that's what Couple Chat's about. Most of the time we talk <laughs> entertainment. That's how that's how it started back in, what was that, 2018, I think? 18? I thought it was 16. It was before we were married. No, I don't think it uh, was because I was just editing together Cal's Memorial. And when I got to that part, I'm pretty sure it was 2018. Right, because we were talking about Solo. Right. And um, Deadpool 2. Mm -hmm. Makes sense that our day nights are movie nights. <laughs> yes. But it uh, doesn't hurt to try something new. Oh, for sure. And Especially like, again, you're together 15 years and then you have kids. It's like sometimes you forget what to do. <laughs> sometimes you forget what's out there as well. Yeah. Especially we had a pandemic. So since like 2020, I mean, we really haven't even thought of like anything creative date wise. No. You know? No. So. So here we are. A box. A box is about to tell us what to do, folks. 
I have a box that tells me what to do already. <laughs> anyway. So, the card on how to play says, Step one, make a choice. Choose a Live date. Live or die. Sorry. Make your choice. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> that was a date night not that long ago. That was a date night not that, that long ago. That was one of our episodes, too. Yeah. And you were there, and, and we were I there. was there, and you were there. <laughs> and Dave and Jess were there. Yes, I know. <laughs> you know, it's funny because... <laughs> I literally was at Christmas Eve because we go to my brother's house for Christmas Eve. And I was like, hey, David, did you see Saw X? And he was like, dude, we went to the movies together to see it. As a double date. Like, yep. it wasn't even just him and David. Yep. It was all four of us. His wife, me, Matt, and David. Again, we go on movie date nights Far too often. Not enough, really. Touche. It's like, Touché. what? Once now. a month? Now. But yeah. double date ever. <laughs> never. We have never <laughs> been no. on a double date with them. Maybe I don't dinner. Think that. Maybe yeah, dinner. Maybe. But never a movie da double date night. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> so unforgettable, right, guys? Unforgettable. <laughs> That's what you are. But realistically, I mean. That was probably our most fun date night in a long time because it was different. <laughs> we still went to the movies, but it was different. True. <laughs> so, step one, make a choice. Choose a date at random, leveraging guidelines around required prep, cost estimates, date length, ideal time, and location. Okay. That's a lot in <laughs> step one. Yeah. That's five steps in step one. <laughs> Oh, I wonder what that exactly means. I feel like it doesn't really mean anything until we see one of them, right? Right. Okay. Step two, unveil and commit. Uh-oh. Like a wedding. <laughs> Touche. Is that what it says? That's, no. <laughs> well, just that said was that. A good, that was a good joke. Thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unveil the date and commit to completing your surprise date, even if you have to make small adjustments to make it work for you. Okay. Babysitter. <laughs> Step three, deepen your connection. We've included 200 plus conversation starters in the box, plus an additional 100 plus conversation starters by QR code. Utilize Ooh. these on your dates to spark meaningful discussions. Interesting, interesting. Step three. Well, we've played a lot of games that are basically like that. It's mm. just cards. Like, um, you guys know that shoe wedding game where it's like, who would do the dishes? And then you hold up your shoe or their shoe or both. One of the games I bought is basically kind of like that. It's just that, though. And the only thing that I found about some of those games is, I don't know, there's no challenge. You know, like, we're very, like, we like to win. We like co competition. Yes, competition. Mm -hmm. There's not really any competition with those games. The one we were trying, were we? wasn't there, wasn't there one where we were trying to make it a competition? It mm -hmm. was like, ooh, drinking game. Yeah. Well, you pull the card and it's one of those ones where it's like, if you don't answer the card, you have to drink. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know that. So there's that one. Yeah, I guess. But All we're right. not that type of drinker. It's not like we're taking shots. Shots, 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 shots. Anyway, <laughs> step four. Memorialize the experience. Snap pictures and journal your experiences to create lasting memories for your magical moments together. Oh, we never do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. Hence why we don't have any pictures right now of us other than the one that we took during a couple chat the other night. Right. <laughs> we don't. No? We don't even have a family picture. The last family picture we had is when? Well, family picture. We're talking about date night. I know. I'm just saying. I don't know. I would like a family photo. Okay. It's kind of hard to do a family photo now. One of our family members is not with us. I know. So kind of like probably the reason we haven't done it. I know. All right. Anyway. Anyway. So there we are. And let's. Chat. Oh. Pick a card, any card. Pick a date, any date. 
So this is card number one, it says. Right? Are you supposed to go in order? Or are you supposed to just... Says random. Yeah, see, they're numbered. Okay. But you said random. Yep. Okay, um, so. Choose a date at random, leveraging guidelines around prep, cost estimates, date length, ideal time, and location. Okay. So... Who's picking? There's a lot of dates. There's a there's fifty. Fifty two. Fifty two pickup. Yeah, kick, kick, kick. I don't know. You were fanning them out, so I was assuming I was the one picking. There you go. Pick All the right. card, any card. Na, na, wow. na, 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 na. Oh, it's you were 16. so close to picking the seventeenth oh. date. Well, Shucky shucks. That's it. Yeah, throw the game away now. No. All right. 52 date ideas. 16. Number 16 is the wiener. Wiener, wiener, chicken dinner. So same size as the instructions, um, but on the back, there's a little open here tab, and basically you peel off what it says. And right now it says uh, at the bottom, it tells you, what the requirements are. So it says required prep, moderate, cost mm -hmm. estimate, low, date length, two to three hours, ideal time, any, and ideal location, indoors, at home. Huh. So Isn't that, that funny? We were just talking about that. An indoor date. Uh, an like at an at-home date, date night. Yeah. That is so funny. Well, because we're parents. <laughs> we're parents. <laughs> and you know it's hard to go out so this is a date we can just do here after the kids go to bed hopefully i don't know what it is yet yeah me neither but that's exciting would you like to do the honors especially because we were just talking about this that's so funny yeah yeah i would love to i kind of want her to do it anyway because i don't want to mess ASMR. it up Ooh. <sighs> did you hear that actually it was a lot easier than i thought it would did be. you hear that pop 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 okay ready surely this is a long paragraph. <laughs> wow. It fills up the whole section. Wow, wow, wow. That we ripped open. Wow. I mean, they got to explain a date. Sure. Okay. So, <clears throat> date number 16. Creative visioning. Time to get creative. Grab a poster board, glue sticks, a set of magazines, scissors, and markers to make a shared vision board for your future. <laughs> Uh oh, this she's is gonna already cry so now. cool. I'm gonna cry. This is stupid. Um, <laughs> uh, meaning a visual representation of your goals. Before you begin, spend some time discussing the goals you want to achieve over the next year and why. Write down at least four goals each, two individual, two related to your relationship. Flip through the magazines to find images and words related to your goals, aspirations, and cut them out. Once you've formed a collection, assemble these items on your poster board in any way that feels meaningful to you. Then, spend some time reflecting on the experience. How did it feel to work on a project like this together? What did you learn about each other's hopes and aspirations? How can your vision boards guide you in the future? Cool. That is cool. So I have one major question about this. Yeah. Where do you get magazines? With tiny houses in them. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't what I was saying. I was just um, saying, where do you get magazines these days? <laughs> we don't get them in the mail. No. And the only people we know that get them, they're political magazines. So I ain't using those. Ah. Hmm. Uh, All right. Well, we have some prep to do as Walmart. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I've seen magazines at like... Yeah. Grocery stores and stuff. So we have to just find some things that are relevant to us. Sure. To be able to put this together. It doesn't have to be exactly what you're saying. Like, I know you said tiny house. I was just making a joke. No, it's not, not a joke. really. Yeah. But, but I was just like, haha. -ha. Yeah. But as, as long as like we're putting things together that represent these things. Sure. You know, sure. Like, and like you can always cut out words. Like, I don't know if you ever did this in high school or like any time during college but like not they, at those times they give you they give you time in yeah. certain classes 
like current event classes will make you do something like this or even like creative writing could. I did this maybe once a long time ago when I was in a camp. Mm. I don't even remember what it was or where I was, Mm. but I did this. I did this in high school. It was like our senior year and it was like what goals you want to achieve while you're in college. And that was kind of, and I've seen it in movies before. Who oh, has the vision well, board? Sure. There's one movie in particular Every that like, I'm Every single girl in the 80s on. movies? No. Is Every it single, EVA? Every single 80s movie girl? No, they don't have a vision board. Not like I'm talking about. No, they actually have like a vision board posted up on like their high school bedroom or their like dorm room. And it's like, that's what I want. That's where I'm going to be. Or that's, that's where, where I'm, I'm going. That's where I'm going to go. I forget where I feel. I mean, I'm sure there's a few, but every eighties movie girl. No, <laughs> mm, he's, he, you're going to get it. You, <laughs> well, I'm going to say right off the bat. I think this is really interesting only because I think this is the perfect time for us to do this. You mentioned tiny housing and you know, our son's about to be four. Our daughter's about to be two. Like there's a lot to look forward to in the next year. We have, a lot of things that we're trying to achieve. Mm. It's also a new year. It's also a leap year. Mm. Okay. Which leap years are supposed to be lucky. Oh, okay. So, well, hopefully. that's awesome. I'm very intrigued. And now we have something to do this weekend. So I yeah. guess we'll get back to you guys on what happens with this date. We absolutely will. Thanks for being here with us. I'm very excited. Do we want to do a couple of these yeah. little cards just to like show what kind of conversations we could have really quick? Yeah, sure. Um, I picked up intimacy. Let's not do that one right now. No, no, no. <laughs> um, past and future, no, either. Whatever. You want to do... Let's you want to do, do family do... since we're parents. Okay, parents. Let's do family and, and our couple. lives as a couple. Sure. Why one of those wasn't good? Individual or past and future. All right, so let's do our lives as a couple and family. Perfect. Just pick a couple out of here. Pick a card. I'm going to say that a lot in this episode. Sorry, folks. <laughs> oh, these are number two. How the heck do you get these out? You just slide it up. There's a tab. Oh. Terrible. And now they've escaped the box. <laughs> okay. You get in go, the box. You want to go first? Life as a couple girl? Sure. Can you describe a time when you genuinely felt I've made you the priority in my life? Hmm. This is a really hard question, actually. <laughs> well, while you're uh, burning brain cells over there, I'm going to tell you when you make me your priority. Okay. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Because, like, Matt's just, like, that not typical guy where, like, he goes above and beyond for not just me, but for our kids. And he does everything he can to support us and get us out in the morning and feed us at night. And he's just, you're just really amazing at what you do. And even before we had kids, you took care of me and you always put me first. And I guess the best times that I could say you put me first or my ideas first because it, it, it kind of always came down to my creativity like that's where you come in and it's like oh my goodness you're there and you have always been someone I could look to because even though we're in a relationship you're super objective mm. um, so I could bring an idea to you or something creative you're always very truthful and you give good criticism and things of that nature. But to be more specific, um, a time where you really made me a priority is, and I, I'll choose this only because the others, you were involved in different ways, but I'm going to say Legacy of Snakes. So obviously I'm a filmmaker and I spend a lot of time and I try not to spend a lot of money, mm -mm. but you know, you have to spend a little bit to make a movie. Mm -hmm. Um, but I spent a lot of time and effort to put films together. And Legacy of Snakes was one of the ones where you really weren't involved when it came to acting or anything of that nature. You really took more of a crew seat there. Mm. But that didn't 
matter. You were there for every shoot day. You helped me run the show and you also helped me get to that goal of, I mean, I lost a lot of weight. I looked really good for that film because you knew that that was a big goal of mine. And it obviously meant a lot to me because this is a character I know and love and wanted to play. And I finally made the decision to make a fan film about him and you were on board. There's never a time where you go, absolutely not. You shouldn't do that. Yeah. You're always, uh, no, do that. Yeah. So whether you're physically there for me, um, that may not always be the case, but you are always mentally there for me, if mm. that makes any sense. So with Legacy of Snakes, yes, you are physically and mentally there. But I mean, this day and age, I have so much going on and I have thoughts about so many different things when it comes to films, my business, working with clients, just so many different things. Every time I need you for something, it could even be as simple as, you know, hey, can you look over this um, proposal for a client? Like, you're always there yeah, to help me with those things. And again, you always give constructive criticism and you're always very truthful about your answers. It's never, oh yeah, this looks great because you're my husband and I think everything you do is great. You're yeah. not like that. It's, <laughs> you know, you're the complete opposite of so many other people. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah. That's, I guess that's the thing that, you know, so there's that. I found something. <laughs> I couldn't help but think of too, like, there's been times where Han Films has kind of taken, like, the front seat. And, like, I've been on the back end just, like, r cheering you on. And, like, I know you have this ability and that you just need to spread your wings and be able to focus on it. But, Yeah. And well, I'm glad that you feel that way. And I will always support you no matter what. And I will always tell you my honest opinion because I have no filter. But it's great. Yeah. You're welcome. I wouldn't have chosen you. Pika jacket you. Jacket you. Jacket, jacket. If, uh, if I didn't like that part of you. Yeah. So that is one quality of you that I love in our relationship maybe not so much when we're out in public sometimes but definitely in our relationship i love that honesty is the key to a successful and happy relationship yeah anyway mm -hmm. anyway so mine is about family yes. wait this is two-sided it is two-sided oh. i asked you the one side okay so i'll ask you this side i guess Name something you wish your family did differently when you were growing up. How would this have affected you? Memory building and like local stuff. Because I feel like, you know, a lot of families have like the, oh, I used to go pumpkin picking as a kid or, oh, I used to, you know, do this thing with my family every year. And like it was low cost. It was local to home. Like there wasn't anything crazy involved it was just about making memories and traditions and i feel like that just wasn't the thing like we did the typical white collar went to church did the holidays thing and then like everyone was kind of just like all over the place and not together at all mm -hmm. from when like as early as i can remember like yeah i did dance with my sisters and then at some point point then at some point with my cousins, but like that varied. It wasn't like all the time. And then we'd go on vacation like once a year, but, and then it turned into twice a year and then three times a year. <laughs> but like the, I don't remember making memories at those things. Like I remember the poke nose visits. Cause that was like a new year's tradition we had. We're like, we were all together at this resort and we were able to like really celebrate the holiday together. But there's such an age range in our, like the kids in my family that I don't know if it was really all of us for very long. Cause I don't remember Kevin ever at the Poconos. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't remember him ever at Caesars, maybe like two or three times. But like, it was really just like the younger four of us. And like, I don't know. We were all, we're all just in different stages of life at that point. And 
I don't remember it ever being like, yeah, we're making core memories as a family. Like, I don't know. I feel like the vacations weren't the important part. It was about the memories that we could have been making. And maybe if there was more like things like that where we could all like do like family activities together as opposed to let's go on vacation and do things separate on the vacation. Cause like, that's the thing when we were put in camp, we we're put in different age levels. We're not yeah. together. We have our own friends there. Like every single time we went on vacation, we, it was like we were home, but we had our group of friends there. Like it didn't feel any different. It was just in a different state. Right. Um, so yeah, I think maybe that, like maybe we'd be closer. Maybe there'd be more foundation there of like, I don't know, that I don't know, that support system and like those stories. Like mm. I don't have any of that. Yeah. So that is definitely something that I think would would have been nice. That's what we're trying to do with our kids. Yeah. You know, we're trying to do these things like during these seasons. You know, my mom says the excuse of, oh, I don't like Halloween or, you know, imagine taking five kids to a pumpkin patch. It's like, well, your five kids are 10 years apart. Like there's a 10 year age range. Like we would have been fine. We would have fun, I think. But who knows? We will never know. Yeah. So that's my perspective on it. Hmm. I guess the one thing I can say, unfortunately, mine are always like just so sad and I wish our communication was better. Mm. I mean, I was too young to know any anything, but my parents had terrible communication, obviously. And whether it was because they didn't really like each other or my mom didn't like my dad or whether it was because they had already gotten to a point that their relationship wasn't working anymore. I don't know, but communication just is not a thing with that generation. I feel well, it's also still a problem to this day. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but we, we are very specific on how we communicate and, you know, I mean me, I try to be a complete opposite of them and I want to get down to the nitty gritty of what's going on. You know, you're a little bit on the opposite side where you kind of shut down and are closed off. And that obviously comes from your upbringing. But me, I took the reverse effect. Mm. You know, I'm very open and I want to be communicative with everyone. And I think that, you know, that has helped us be closer and and I hope that that helps our children as well. And I mean, that's, you know, made you a little better at that. But but yeah, I mean, I think if we were more communicative and a little more open as a family, maybe we could have worked out some of the issues that happened. And, you know, I'm not saying that like maybe a divorce would have not happened, but there could have been a better outcome. Mm. I don't know. But yeah, communication. I think that's the big thing. So these took a while. These were deep. Yeah, super. <laughs> but see what you can do <laughs> with 52 date nights and 300 plus conversation starters. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's fine. You know, if again, if you're a communicative type of couple and you're interested in getting into this kind of conversation with your significant other. I mean, this is great. Like you and I have always been pretty open and we don't really keep anything from each other, but yeah. you know, this brings up new and interesting ways to have conversations about maybe some subjects that we've already talked about or you know, you never know what you'll run into in there. Exactly. And that's kind of why when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Because, you know, I've seen those fa those Instagram ads where, oh, we got the scratch off book for the date night. Like, yeah. let's scratch off the little thing and it'll tell us what to do in the envelope. Like, that's kind of cool. So this is more of like a condensed version 
which I'm kind of excited about. But we'll see. I mean, I really, I'm really excited about this um, date that you picked. It's kind of like silly and it's I don't not, know. It's not though. I think we'll have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. I think it's very reminiscent. But we're all about like, like you're a very creative person. I'm creative in a little bit of a different way. Yeah. But like, I feel like this could help us too. Like, I feel like if we had this up in the office, oh, in sure. the kitchen. I didn't like, even think about it like that. Like if, if we finish this vision board yeah, and we're happy with it, like I can imagine just putting it up there and being able to explain it to our kids, especially Nate. He's so curious now. Yeah. I think it would definitely just help so much in the long run. Mm. Just like give him the idea of like what mommy and daddy like and, and where we want to be. And like, I don't know, maybe he can, you know, he's only four in a couple of weeks, but like maybe he can help us get to those points, you know, like yeah. make life a little easier and help around the house or like doing certain things. Like get a job. Yeah. Kid, come on, <laughs> pay your rent already. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really, really excited. Yeah. This so, is good. So as you see, this thing's pretty cool. We obviously only opened up one date and a couple of questions. But if it's interesting to you, again, what is it? Desi Shop? D-E-S-S-I-E shop.com. Yeah. I bought it on Amazon, so it's pretty easy to find. I could actually put the link in uh, the description. So if you guys are interested in it, you could find it for yourselves yeah and we are not affiliates we're not no. being paid to advertise this <laughs> <laughs> box it just so happened that matt got it for us for our anniversary and we're giving it a, giving it a try yeah and maybe you know if this turns out awesome and you know we have some conversations that night when we do this from this box maybe we'll do this again in another like month or so and we'll Record all our 52 dates on here. Ooh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Like a couple chat date line or something like that. Couple chat date line. Tonight on couple chat date line. Did it, did it, did it. Anyway. <laughs> I'm Matt. I'm Jackie. Here, here are the Hans, Hans signing, signing out. out. Thank you so much for listening to Couple Chat. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify or YouTube Music. And check out our YouTube page to see this episode in video. Thank you to Han Films for editing and producing this episode. Talk to you soon.